Hey guys, so I just released my first NPM package. It's called Pick Cash, or as I like to say it, Picachi. And uh, this is the component that I built in the last few videos that takes a uh, URL and it caches the image for you. That way it's faster on previous loads and also works offline. So pretty sweet. Now, I wanna show you guys how I did this because I made this with TypeScript. So I had to get it configured so that way I could generate an output that would be acceptable by NPM. But it is on NPM now. I went ahead and did publish it. I'll put a link in the description below. And I also have it on GitHub. And if you guys want to make issues, if you find bugs with it, or if you want to make pull requests, I'm open to all of that. Okay, so once I got the code in order, also I just followed this guide to publish. It's actually really easy to publish an NPM package once you have it up, and I'll link this in the description below as well. So here is what my uh, package looks like, or the source code for it. So first I wanna go over um, some changes I made to this code if you guys were following along. Now this is, doesn't have to do anything with making an NPM package, but I made some changes so it works. Um, first change I made. So in the path I added .png at the end because on iOS devices it needs to know that the file it's trying to read is an image. So I'm not sure if the file is actually a JPEG and I put .png at the end if that will cause problems. I'm kind of just you know waiting to see. It doesn't for my testing. It doesn't look like it has, but I don't know if there's certain images that'll get messed up. Basically, I just want to indicate to uh, iOS that it is an image, so it'll go ahead and read it. Because before this, it was not working um, without the .png, but now it does. Secondly, we're having problems with the type, and so what I did about that is I changed how I did making my props interface. You'll notice I have a whole bunch of junk here now. Um, and you're probably wondering how I came to this. Well, if you remember last time I had a props and it was extending some type. And I was like, uh, and it was, the reason it was causing a problem is because the regular image type, and we can actually see it. So if, if you see the image right here, what I did is I peaked the definition. Um, and I just saw in here, we want to get the type of it. So go to type definition. Oh, it can't find it. Um, maybe it was a different thing that I looked at. Um, but I, I was able to peek it. And it looks sort of like this. This is better. So when I peeked the definition for it, and this is whatever type I had, I was extending before. I can't remember which one it was. But I saw basically the definition for it and I just copied over everything. So this is a nice feature of Visual Studio Code that lets you check the types, so I really like that. So then I was able to just copy and paste, uh, all this I copy and pasted, so I'm extending these three, and then all these types here come from uh, the type that I was extending. Now I removed the source. So with the regular image component in React Native, it expects a source in our case, we're using a URI string instead, so I needed to remove that from the type, so this is how I did that. Okay, but this is my source code right here, and so I put it in a folder which I called source. And now I put my type, my short hash type, because this is the one library I'm using that needed a type, so I have that in my source as well. Now, I didn't use any type of boilerplate or anything to start this off. I just did npm init in a folder to get this set up. Um, and then we can look at what dependencies I installed. So I went ahead and installed expo and react types as regular dependencies and also react native. And the reason I did this is so anyone who installs this package will also have the types um, for these. Um, but I'm not sure. I looked at some things and people had their types and the dependencies. Uh, this is my first package, so I'm not quite sure the best practices on some of these things. But uh, for one, I could understand it. We want to have the types that you're using in dependencies, but that could be wrong. And then I'm also using short hash, so that's there. Now you'll notice the interesting thing is my peer dependencies here. So I added a peer dependency of Expo, React, and React Native. And I just put stars for now to indicate that this works for um, any versions of all three of these. Now, 
the reason why I made them peer dependencies is if you're installing this package, I'm pretty much making the assumption that you're using all three of these. Um, and so this just makes sure you have those installed uh, when you're using it. Uh, and then real quickly, I set up uh, TSLint, which is like ESLint, so it's for checking the types. Um, and then the only other package I'm using is TypeScript, and that's to compile things. So you'll notice with my scripts, I am just removing all the things from lib. Lib is where the output of TypeScript, when you build it, it goes, but we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, I want to show you guys my TSLint real quick. Um, nothing special except I'm using the TSLint config uh, prettier, which allows just so when I'm doing things, uh, I have the prettier plugin, uh, it doesn't collide and cause problems with TSLint. Okay. So here's my TS config. Uh, I don't know if all these are necessary. I just kind of had uh, looked at all the rules and picked out um, some, like pretty much all these are just like uh, in relation to checking and all that. These here, the important ones up here are uh, this one. So the outdoor directory I'm specifying, I want when I, so, my TypeScript files here, I have to compile them right to regular JavaScript. So these are the rules of how it compiles it basically and, and checks things. So when I compile it, I want it to go to a folder called lib. So you notice how I have a Pikachu right here uh, with .js instead of TSX. And so I, another important one is I made this in TypeScript. So I want anyone who installs my package to also have the types that I used already. And so by saying declaration true here, it's going to create a folder in the lib called pikachi.d.ts. And that's where my types are. So we can actually click on that and we can see, hey, look, this is my props. And here is the component and uh, the props in the state. So that's awesome. So now when you guys use or if anyone uses this in TypeScript, they have the types. But in package.json, what you have to do is make sure you tell them where the types are located. So here's me specifying the location of the types. All right, and then I don't think there's anything else really happening. I specified that React, it was React Native. And then for the module, I did common JS, so it works with, uh, uh, for NPM packages. And oops, I'm just gonna get rid of the space because we don't need it anymore. And then here I'm just including all the TSX and TypeScript files inside of source. So it's taking all of them, putting them inside of a lib. And that's pretty much it. So I just run uh, right here. If we go over to package.json, I just do npm run build. It clears out the library and then it runs. This is TypeScript that will compile everything, put it in this folder. And then it's important to add main to your package.json. This specifies uh, the entrance to your uh, file, like basically your main file. So the main file here is this one, pikachi.js. Um, yeah, so that's how I got it set up. Basically all I had to do was install TypeScript and then get my TypeScript config the way I like it. The important bits are the out directory, uh, JSX and module, and then what I'm including and that spits out the library, which uh, I then just publish. And one other thing in my package.json, I specify the files I want. The file I want is the lib file. And I don't think there was anything else. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below uh, with how to uh, create an NPM package with TypeScript. So this is indeed a component, a React Native component that was built with TypeScript that is now on NPM. So if you have any questions about that, feel free to leave a comment below. I'd happy be happy to answer any of your questions. Well, that's it for this video, guys. And actually, I actually wanted to do a quick demo. Um, I forgot about that. Uh, this is how it works. If you've seen my last two videos, you've already seen this. But this is just a regular, pretty much you can replace this with image and use uh, source instead of URI. And uh, this is what it looks like. And so we're just importing it here and I'm using TypeScript. So, and I can just import it directly like that. And then I use it like this. So here's a little example and I have an example in the readme as well. 
But yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.